Lakers, Suns, game five is tonight. The series is heading back to Phoenix, tied the same way as it was coming back to L.A. And now we find out that AD is probably day-to-day. -day. He will not be playing in game five. And the Lakers somehow still held the Suns to about 100 points in game four. So, Mark, how do you feel about the Lakers heading into game five against the Suns tonight? Uh, nervous? What, you, what other, uh, <laughs> what other uh, feeling would you want me to feel? Excited. I am deathly afraid of everything right now. This is the worst case scenario. I don't know what's going to happen. I hope Vogel gets it together. He's got to play everybody. Yeah, he's got to play every big on that team to fill that void of one big. That is Anthony Davis. I mean, how about you? What do you think? Okay, so I was talking to Chris Rubio earlier today because he just called me for his show. And I have to say that Frank Vogel said right after game four, um, because there were like media asking him like, Hey, like with AD gone, how do you feel about the rest of the series? And like Vogel was like, Hey, look, like when I was a coach at Indiana and I had to go up against the LeBron teams of Miami days, I thought Chris Bosch being hurt was a sigh of relief. No, that just means LeBron is getting more touches. So I thought like going yeah. in, that was a sign of optimism. If the Lakers can find a way with Contavious Caldwell Pope coming back to the lineup tonight, um, if they could find a way to string up more threes, like they, they got off to a good start in the first half of game four. They were up by at least like 11 points from what I remember. Yeah. And they were making a lot of threes. So I think if the Lakers can continue that or continue that through a four game or excuse me, four quarter stretch, they can pull out the W tonight. I think it's possible. I, I still think they have to play the paint more because that's our strength too. But I mean, especially with AD, but. Without him, I mean, I, I kind of feel like we could still be dominant because we're still taller, we're still bigger. So, I mean, that, that that's way how I felt like it was. They were able to execute and able to outscore the, the Suns. But you know, that's uh, you know, I wouldn't mind them making their threes. I just, I just don't trust them with the threes. Yeah, and to that point, like I was saying with LeBron James, Mikael Bridges is guarding him. If you guys have been paying attention to the series at all. Mikel Bridges looks like a shrimp compared to LeBron James, who looks like a tank. <laughs> and so I'm just like, why doesn't he just back him up every time? Like, even if you were to have someone, whether it's Booker, whether it's Aiton, somebody, like another defender from the Suns come out to guard him, then at least yeah. they'll have an open person. So you can work in and out. But LeBron James, I think, well, that's what I'm predicting. LeBron James will be attacking the rim more than we have seen him in the first four games. Yeah, he has to. I mean, that, that's what was uh, getting us out of the hole. You know they they got they can't stop that guy like that he's you know the dude you, you, exactly you said it perfectly he's a tank and he, all he's got to do is just get to the paint and get to the rim and he'll score every time get fouls get get everyone in foul trouble you know why aren't we the coaches come on now <laughs> I know right let's get Frank Vogel what's, um, what's wrong with that guy so to your point with uh, the down low I I really think uh, DeAndre Ayton is devouring. Uh, Andre Drummond um, and I, I would like to see more minutes from Marcus Gasol but I would also like to see more minutes from Montrez Harrell Montrez Harrell and I would like to see more mi minutes from Trez because if Aiton is ever off the floor I really do think Trez can like for once match up against uh, Kamininski who will be coming in for Aiton so I think Trez can take opportune times uh, when Aiton is off the floor so like I'm looking at the game log Aiton was in for 38 minutes. He was in for 41 minutes in game three, and then game two, 42 minutes, and then game one, 37 minutes. So, like, he's probably going to miss mm -hmm. seven minutes, but that's seven minutes where you could have one of the best offensive bench scorers in the league come in and probably corral the team for a rally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, and he's the energy guy, so I just don't I don't understand it. I'm, I'm glad to see uh, Markeith Morris on the floor because that we need that. We need that toughness. I'm so glad you mentioned him because I was so happy to see him. But at the same time, it was like mixed emotions because I'm like, all right, the reason why he's missing this layup or he's missing these free throws is because this is his first game all series long, right? Like yeah. why wasn't Vogel, Vogel playing him from the start? I, you know, I, I understand how Vogel strategizes, I guess, because, you know, he likes to, you know, he doesn't like to show you all of his cards. So I figured this was going to be one of those scenarios. Like, who would have thought Marquise Morris was going to be such a clutch three-point you know, player? So I don't know if maybe that's what he's waiting for or for the right opportunity or what, but I'm just glad to see him on the floor because, you know, he was huge last season. Hopefully he could – I mean, it's going to be a slow start, but he's getting there. So I, I, I have all the faith in him. Yeah, to your point, like, this is the person that the Lakers were playing when AD was moved to the five in last postseason. Yeah. 
And it's kind of weird that like even there was moments where we saw AD go to the five and Keith was in out on the floor. And so it was just awkward in that sense. I mean, why are you playing Kuzma, who is practically blowing the games, and you're not giving Keith minutes? I, I would rather give Montres Harrell minutes over Kuzma. Yeah, I can see that because Kuzma. See, here's the thing with Kuzma. Uh, he's been offensively terrible, but defensively he's, and rebounding, he's been pretty good. Right. Like, so, let me, like you kind of have to, like, I don't know, pick your poison, I guess, with him. But I'd rather see Trez be on uh, because we need someone that, to score. If you could, if you, I mean, I wanna, we had a terrible third quarter. That quarter, I don't know what was going on with them, you know, with that last game. But, I mean, when they're on defense, they're, we can lock them up. We just need to start scoring. Uh, every time they shoot a three or even the night get in the paint, Trez can get in the paint, throw him in there. He's an animal. He'll tear it up. That's what we need. Well, to your point about that third quarter, so, okay, the Lakers were up barely going into halftime, and then you realize when they're coming back uh, that Anthony Davis wasn't going to be playing the rest of the game. So then within the first two minutes, Vogel does a dumbass challenge, and then he cost the team a timeout. So there was a moment where you saw the Suns start to, like, go off and, like, have a rally, and when they went on that run, that would have been the perfect time for the timeout to happen. There were two bad challenges the last two home games from the Lakers by Vogel. Vogel set a record for 15 seconds in an NBA game to like send a challenge. And I, I'm just like, why are you wasting your challenges for these dumb ass calls? It's crazy that he's even using him so early in the game. The, what was it? Game two, he used it. And uh, like the first 14 seconds or something like that. No, that was game three. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Game three. Oh, okay. That's the one. Okay. I don't get it, dude. I just don't get it. Uh, I, you know, I don't you want to save those towards the end or when it's like a little bit more like, you know, it's going to be in your favor. Like, I don't know if he understands like what he's doing sometimes. Cause I'm like, wait, well, at least with calling the, you know, with the, the challenge fouls, that, that's just weird. Yeah. Yeah. And to your point, like that would have been a perfect time to stop and then to essentially stop the bleeding and then to evaluate because like, yeah. if you would have stopped the run, then you would have probably, probably. You would have probably stopped half of the points that they would have scored because they went up by as much as I want to say thirteen points, maybe fifteen. Because you know what? the one complaint that the only complaint I, I never complain about the officiating because I already know it's dumb sometimes. <laughs> but this last game was so bad <laughs> with some of the calls that we were like we, we, we weren't getting anything, like, and Chris Paul was getting everything. I don't know if you noticed that, but there were some terrible calls that happened this last game. Oh, I did. I, I think I put at halftime the Lakers, and I put the score, and I put and the Suns and the refs. But yeah. <laughs> like it just, I was, it was like, bad, so dude. It, was, awful. it was almost obvious. Like I know that, like the fact that the uh, you know, Lakers minus six was trending, like that. Made, I don't know if that had to do something with it. Because I mean, you know, if you if you're betting on the Suns, and hey, you want a lot, so. No, yeah, that's true. How do you think? Uh, the whole lineup will look tonight. I mean, KCP will should be back, but do we expect to see more three point shooters? Are we expecting to see more bigs to join LeBron? Like, how is the lineup going to look? I think he's going to play the bigs because I mean, he started bringing him, uh, you know, well, like I said, Keith and uh, and Gasol. So I th- and and Trez too. So I think he's going to try to go a little bigger now to kind of he got they got to clog that paint. We we got they got to make sure they keep the Suns trying to shoot. Well, I mean, I guess Chris Paul's like back to being normal again, but. I mean, you live by the three, die by the three. So, you know, and the Suns are, ironically, the most you know popular team that's always, you know, hit threes. But, um, you know, I, I still say we can at least, you know, that will be our defense as well. So, yeah, but I don't know. I I, I want to see more um, uh, uh, Macklemore and, and, uh, and Wes Matthews. Wes Matthews, is, he impressed me a little bit. He wasn't as good, but he was, you know, he was, he did some, yeah, he impressed me.